with the second page for this Algebra 1 review. Working with proportions, pretty much saying that we have two fractions equal to each other. Uh, this gets brought up a little bit in geometry. I think in Algebra 1 you don't see too much of it, but I think in this section, even though we're skipping it, they throw it in quite a bit, as we can see. Um, we see fractions pretty much down the line. So this is dealing with two fractions set equal to each other. And for these first three, we're solving it meaning that one of the four parts of the fraction, whether it's the numerator here or here, denominator here, denominator here, um, is something that we don't quite have. And cross-multiplying is really going to help us out here because if we cross-multiply all of this, meaning we end up with the same common denominators, um, we can solve for what that might be. And I think these look intimidating, one, because they're fractions, and two because they're equal to each other, so it's double trouble with two fractions. But if we cross multiply, this will make our life a lot easier. So when we say cross multiply, we're multiplying this numerator of two with this denominator of k, even though it's a variable. So this would be 2k, just like the video game series. If we then multiply 1.2 with this five, We have 5 times 1.2. Eventually, we would be cross multiplying uh, denominators, ending up with k times 1.2. But since we cross multiplied, this is going to imply we have the same denominators. And all we really need to solve now is this problem here. So if we take the product of 5 and 1.2, this gets us 6. So NBA 2k equals 6. If we solve for k, k equals 3 here. So that's our final answer. Uh, what's cool is that sometimes you can guess and check on these, but I don't suggest it all the time. Uh, for this first problem, we'll check it just to make sure that this makes sense. So we have 2 dividing by 1.2, which is 1.6 repeating. And if we were to have 5 divided by 3, that's the same idea, just a simplified or a different version of the fraction. So this is fair game, so we're good on those. I'll give you a moment for the next two if you want to solve those. You should be saying that in this case, g equals 5. And in this case, if we cross multiply, we have 4m equals how we want to keep it. So we keep it 100. If we divide by 4 on both sides, m equals a quarter. And again, we can always plug our work back in and check it. So for the second portion, we're solving these equations. We have two sides of the equation to focus on. I think we saw this first in chapter 1, so I won't spend too much time on these. If we try to end up with positive coefficients, we can have negative 3y thrown over here, deduct 5 here and here, getting 4y equals negative 36. So y would have to be equal to negative 9. Once you divide. Uh, with this 1 half, you have a few options. If you want to distribute, you can. But I'm going to try and get rid of this 2. How do you think I could get rid of this 2? If we have 1 dividing by 2, how can we break that fraction apart? Well, our denominator is 2, so if we undo this division with multiplying both sides by 2, so I'll just put parentheses around it and have 2 there, we're left with t plus 7, and this equals now 64. If we saw for t, t is now equal to 57. And we can always check our work on this. 
Six has a little bit more going on because we have a variable up here and a binomial, and this is dividing by six, and the denominators are not the same. You have a few ways you can solve this. The one way I'm going to use is with cross multiplying. So I know that if I multiply 2h minus 6 using parentheses here, because this is a binomial, and I multiply that with 3, what's this going to have to be equal to? Should be saying the product of 6 and 2, so 12. If you want to distribute, you can. Let's call this 6h minus 18 equals 12. Eventually you have 6h equals 30. So h is going to have to be equal to 5. We're good on those. Of course, if you have questions along the way, shoot me an email. If you have any additional questions, ask in class. Uh, of course, this material does build pretty quickly in Algebra 2, so please make sure that you're continuing to ask questions if you're stuck. 7 introduces a problem that should sound familiar, or an equation that should sound familiar, with distance being equal to the rate multiplying with time. In this problem, what do you think is important? What are the crucial numbers or important information here? Hopefully you're saying that the cheetah running 300 feet is important, the time is important, but what do these represent in the context if we're going to use the distance formula? Well, we have a distance of 300 feet, and we have a portion of time. What are we trying to solve? Speed is another way of saying it's the rate that you're going at. So if we plug in accordingly, we can have 300 equals our rate, which we don't quite know yet. But this is multiplying with 2.92 seconds. How can we solve from here? By dividing both sides by 2.92. This will cancel. I don't know this off the top of my head, so I'll check. 300 dividing by 2.92. So this is a ballpark estimate of 102.74. But what units are going to make sense here? Would we want miles per hour, feet per minute, miles per minute? should be treating this as feet per second. And I use this approximation, not quite the equal sign because this was a decimal, so I'm just rounding accordingly. In the next video, we'll be seeing a little bit of geometry with proportions and a little bit of word problems and also percentages.